Welcome to today's e-learning lesson on inheritance. Today's uh, subtopics that we will be covering uh, is uh, our sex determination, uh, the concept of what is a sex-linked gene, and certain disorders associated with the X sex chromosome. So we call that the X-linked disorders. If you have any questions, please email me at my email address stated on this slide and on every other slide at the bottom. Okay, let's begin. Today's lesson is a little bit long, could be a little bit complicated, so I will talk a little bit slower. Okay, so the materials that we will be needing for class for this part on uh, sex determination. Classwork, page 7, please search in your bio file now. Worksheet, the extra worksheet that I printed for your classes. Um, after today, you can also cover page 5 and page 6. And it's raining right now. Okay, have you ever wondered what is like the proportion of males and females in the world or even just in Singapore? So this particular pyramid um, shows you the data in 2016 of males and females of the different age groups, so a bit like uh, human geography. Uh, in theory, there should be an equal number of males and females that are born um, all the time. But actually, if you look at ours, maybe you can see there's slightly fewer males, maybe at the ages 25 to 29 compared to females. Mm, random fertilization, so sometimes it's not exact, but also this one shows you the proportion of the males alive. Maybe something happened before they were age 25 and then some of them actually died that age okay so uh, could be actually equal but maybe some of them died for some reasons so you have a smaller number there okay um how do you know whether like a human is a uh, sorry hey. how do you know whether a human is assigned male or female uh, based on their karyotype or just looking at the chromosomes so previously under the topic of cell division uh, under meiosis, we talked about how chromosomes inside our somatic cells, they can be paired up. So generally speaking, all somatic human cells, we have 22 homologous pairs. And then the 23rd pair, normally we designate it as your sex chromosomes. So in this case, you can see uh, pair 1 all the way to pair 22. Then on the 23rd pair, we call it the sex chromosomes. The sex chromosomes do have a name. Either they are called the X chromosome or the Y sex chromosome. Okay, so in this case, you can see we have uh, 22 homologous pairs of chromosomes. The 23rd pair, the sex chromosomes, both are X sex chromosomes. And if you remember from the previous chapter, so if a person has both chromosomes, that the sex chromosomes that are X, then the person will be assigned female, right? If it's uh, X and Y, then the person is assigned male. So then we look at some nice uh, electron micrograph images. So this one, artificially colored on the left-hand side, you can see colored blue. You can see the X chromosome is significantly larger than the Y chromosome which is smaller. So this has uh, certain implications uh, later when we cover uh, sex-linked genes. So X and Y chromosomes, so that will be the person assigned as male. If the female, you will see a person assigned female will have two sex chromosomes. They are both X chromosomes. So like the image on the right-hand side, artificially colored. So this is an electron micrograph colored yellow color so you can see two large X chromosomes so this the person that was uh, these chromosomes were taken from was actually assigned female so how do you know uh, how do we come up with this so-called uh, mathematical probability that 50% of all offspring or basically an equal chance of a child being born 
from a human father and mother will be either male or female. So sex chromosomes, if you have one X and one Y sex chromosome, then you will be assigned male. Okay, must be sure of that, the assignment. Okay, uh, sex determination in humans. If you look at this image, you can see that ultimately to create offspring, it involves the fertilization of gametes or sex cells. In other words, a sperm must fertilize an egg. Uh, additionally, what I want you to take note is, remember females, all females have um, two X chromosomes. So the sex chromosomes that we can find inside eggs are only the X chromosomes. So you see over here, uh, both eggs, they have a X sex chromosome. But for the case of males, in order to be assigned a male, basically males must have one X chromosome and one Y sex chromosome. So the type of sperm uh, that males can produce can either contain a X sex chromosome, normally we call it the X sperm, or if the sperm contains the Y chromosome, normally we call that the Y sperm. Okay, so ultimately when the sperm fertilizes the egg, uh, there will be two potential outcomes. If the zygote or the fertilized egg contains an X and Y sex chromosome, then the offspring will be assigned male. If the egg is fertilized by an X sperm, then the zygote uh, basically has two X chromosomes, then the zygote, when developed, will be assigned female. Okay, uh, so this is one way to look at it. This is not a full genetic diagram. Again, I just want to emphasize the point. So mothers, okay, in order to be assigned female, must have two X sex chromosomes. Fathers, to be assigned male, they must have one X and one Y sex chromosomes. And based on the crossing between the male, male and female, the probability of uh, either having a son or daughter is basically 50%. Punnett square to explain the cross, but I emphasize again, Punnett squares, you only use them uh, where as rough working in your MCQ or before you draw a full genetic diagram as rough working, you also may use a Punnett square. But written work, you always need to draw full genetic diagrams. So in females, to be assigned females, she must have two X chromosomes. So therefore, in her egg or female gamete, her eggs can only contain uh, X sex chromosomes. For the case of males, uh, because males contain the, or have the X and Y sex chromosomes, so the type of sperm or gametes that the males can produce can contain either the X sex chromosome or the Y sex chromosome. So based on the Punnett square, again, you can see basically it's a 50% chance of the offspring being born as female and a 50% chance of the offspring being assigned as male. To draw a full genetic diagram, although I didn't ask you to do it, I prepared one. Okay, uh, sorry, my face is blocking the key. I need to emphasize in the case of uh, sex determination, it's not the allele that the two alleles resulting in the genotype that determines the final trait. In the case of sex determination, it is the whole chromosome. So let X represent the X sex chromosome. So the whole structure itself, the sex chromosome. Let Y represent the Y sex chromosome. So it's the whole uh, sex chromosome structure itself and the combination of the two sex chromosomes that determines whether the human is assigned male or female. So let me show you. For example, a parent phenotype. So if you're assigned male, cross with female, the genotype of the parent is not based on alleles, it's actually based on sex chromosomes. So I will write male XY cross with female XX. So what kind of uh, gametes can uh, male and female pre uh, parents produce? So the males will always produce uh, sperm, the male gamete. The females will produce eggs as the female gamete. Okay, gametes are sex cells. So in the sperm, 
that can be either X sperm or Y sperm. In the eggs, they can only contain the X sex chromosome because females only have X sex chromosomes. Uh, once you have gametes, gametes will fertilize each other. So random fertilization means you cannot predict which sperm fertilizes which egg. So in this case, when we are drawing our genetic diagrams, every time we draw the lines, we are just showing all, all possible fertilization combinations. So the first set of lines, the black lines, sperm one, egg one, please use your ruler and pencil to draw these working lines. Sperm 1, egg 2, represented by the purple lines. Please use your own ruler and pencil to draw. Sperm 2, egg 1, represented by the green lines, but you must use your ruler and pencil. And sperm 2, egg 2, represented by my blue lines, but you use your own ruler and pencil to draw in. So based on this... Uh, possibilities what are the offspring genotype so it can be xx xx xy and xy sex chromosomes so in this case the genotype we are referring to the whole the pair of sex chromosomes and not just the the, the two alleles okay within the genotype so offspring phenotype if you have xx you will be assigned female xx female if you have xy chromosomes you will be assigned male. So based on this uh, full genetic diagram, basically our phenotypic ratio, we can summarize it as one female is to one male. So we talk about proportion, then it will be 50% proportion or 50% probability to be assigned either female or male in the case of humans. Okay, And all of this is just determined by the sex chromosomes. Can once you are very clear with this, I'm going to move on to slightly more complicated topics regarding sex-linked genes and uh, X-linked disorders. Okay, so this uh, full genetic diagram, there is a, like a smaller simplified version that I did include in your classwork. You can fill it up there, but for the full diagram, whenever you're asked to draw, this is the one that you should refer to. Okay. Now, uh, once you understand the concept of sex determination, we have to move on to this IP uh, concept called uh, sex-linked genes. Okay. All right. So, uh, remember we have chromosomes. Chromosomes are basically structures that consist of a long DNA strand that is neatly wrapped around your histone proteins. Because the DNA strand that makes up that a single chromosome is very, very long, technically, one chromosome itself can have uh, many, many genes. Remember, genes are segments of DNA that basically control the synthesis of a specific or single polypeptide. And any gene... That means a segment of DNA that is found on the sex chromosome, either found on the X sex chromosome or found on the Y sex chromosome can also be known as a sex-linked gene. And if you take a look at the X and Y sex chromosomes, you do realize the female, the X chromosome is significantly larger. The implication is because X chromosomes are much larger, in other words, the DNA strand that ultimately wraps around the histone proteins to make the X chromosome is also much longer. So then we can actually have many more segments of DNA uh, that can be assigned as genes. So actually when you look at the X chromosomes, you do realize there are a presence of quite a number of chromosomes found on the X chromosome. As compared to the Y chromosome, which is uh, significantly smaller in size, so it does have a shorter length of DNA to make up that chromosome. So there will be also naturally fewer genes found on the Y chromosome. Okay? So, like, like I said previously, so any gene that's located on either the X or Y sex chromosome is known as a sex-linked gene. 
At this point of time, I want you to take a look at the diagrams on my PowerPoint slide. So you see when you have an X and Y chromosome, because the Y chromosome is much smaller in size, so in a way there's missing segments, the Y chromosome is actually missing this whole segment. This means that there's only one copy of the genes, for example, A, B, and C, because Y chromosome itself doesn't have it. Okay, so if you look again on the diagram on the right-hand side, so Y chromosome much smaller, X chromosome much larger, and the X chromosomes itself have a much uh, larger number of genes present. Okay, so as stated, X chromosomes have a larger number of genes found on them. The Y chromosomes have a smaller number of genes found on them. Usually the, the, the genes, the sex-linked genes on the Y chromosome uh, play a lot uh, mainly with sperm development. Uh, okay, mainly make like uh, male-associated traits found on the Y sex chromosome. Okay, uh, so now that you understand the concept of sex-linked genes, I'm going to cover three case studies of uh, X-linked disorders. So this one will refer to your syllabus. We call them the three X-linked disorders are known as your red-green color blindness. That's the first case study. The Duchenne muscular dystrophy, second case study. And then the third case study, hemophilia. Okay, we take a look at this. Okay, uh, when we talk about X-linked disorders, we refer to basically uh, alleles or genes that are associated with the X chromosome. So X-linked genes can only be found on X chromosomes. So if you take a look uh, in a female, okay, at this particular position, the X-linked gene, there can be alternate forms of the genes known as alleles. So in this case, for this female, she has one normal X-linked allele, X-linked gene, uh, and then at the same position for that same gene, she has a defective allele, X-link. Uh, for males, remember they have only one X chromosome and one Y chromosome. If it is an X-link gene, that means this gene is only present on the X chromosome. You will see that for the case of the male, he only has one copy of the allele. So on the Y chromosome, there is nothing because it's a Y chromosome and it will not have that particular X-link gene. Okay, uh, the three case studies, okay, uh, let me explain. The first one that we are going to cover is uh, red-green color blindness. So the red-green color blindness allele is uh, X-link allele. And to be very precise, it's an X-link recessive allele. So in order to have a red-green blindness allele, because it's recessive, normally, wait, let me uh, move my face away. Okay, like that. Better? Mm. Mm. Okay, uh, X-link recessive allele. So, it's found on the X chromosome, so normally we will put a capital letter X, okay? And because the allele is found on the X chromosome, then we assign the allele a specific letter. Because the allele for red-green color blindness is recessive, I assign it arbitrarily small letter B, okay? And it's found on the X chromosome only. Uh, what are the two or three, well, what are the various possibilities? Okay, before I explain the concept of carriers, so if a person has an X normal allele, then it will be X capital letter B. So in this case, males, they have an X and Y sex chromosome. A male that is not red-green colorblind should have the X capital letter B allele. Okay, the moment that a male has a X small letter B allele, that means that is the red-green uh, color blindness allele. The Y, it doesn't do anything. Definitely, this will be a male with a red-green color blindness. Okay. Uh, under what scenario will a female be color blind? 
So for females, because she has two X chromosomes, okay, the red-green color blindness allele found on the X chromosome is recessive. So in order for a female to be red-green, to have red-green color blindness, both of these alleles must be the recessive uh, red-green allele. So in this case, X small letter B, X small letter B, then you will have a female with red-green color blindness. So the moment you have X capital letter B, which is basically the allele for normal color vision, okay, so even under the heterozygous condition, where you have a X capital B and X small letter B. So although the female has one recessive red-green color blindness allele, she also has one dominant normal allele. This female will have normal color vision. But because she carries that uh, recessive x link allele, normally we also can give her, we call her this term a carrier. She's just a carrier, but her phenotype itself is normal. Okay, a female who is normal with normal color vision also then definitely both uh, color blindness allele, she will have the normal one, capital letter B. Okay, uh, let me show you. So anyway, people with uh, regular vision, you will see that they can differentiate reds and greens quite clearly. But then uh, people with red, green color blindness, so certain... Uh, red and green, they cannot actually see very clearly. So you can compare and check whether you are red, green, colorblind. Hopefully not. Females usually have a lower chance as stated here. Okay? So normal vision, you can see the green apple, yellow apple, red apple. But for if you have red, green, color blindness, you notice uh, very hard to differentiate green and red, right? Difficulty distinguishing between red, greens, browns, and oranges. Okay, let me shift my face here. Okay. Mm. All right, so this one is your class no, worksheet set. Okay, I have a question on page six for you. So basically what happens, let me explain. Uh, the x link gene that we are focusing on is the first case study, basically red, green, color blindness, okay? So we have the normal allele, which is dominant, the red, green, color blindness allele, the defective allele in this case is recessive. So if a female is a carrier, meaning that she has one uh, allele that is normal and one that is red, green, color blindness, she will display the normal phenotype, okay? But sometimes we also can describe her as a carrier because she does carry the red-green color blindness defective allele. For the case of this cross, the father, X and Y chromosome, because red-green color blindness allele is a X link gene, it will not be found on the Y chromosome. So only on the X chromosome. In this case, the father has the normal vision so not red green color blind so therefore the father's phenotype he will display normal color vision so he's not red green color blindness yet if they cross and mate and produce offspring okay what will you notice basically you will see two things number one is 50 percent of the offspring likely to be female 50 percent of the offspring likely to be male Yet at the same time, based on this cross, two of the daughters both will be showing normal phenotype in a sense that they are not colorblind. And out of the two normal phenotypes among the females, actually one of the females is functioning as a carrier, even though she displays the normal phenotype. If they have a male that is born, one of them will have normal probability-wise normal vision, inherit the normal allele, but the other scenario, the male, he will have the defective allele. He will be affected in the sense that he is uh, going to display red-green color blindness phenotype. So the question in your classwork on page 6, I'll go through slowly. So based on the figure below, which is this one, 
It shows a pair of parents where the mother has a single X linked recessive allele for red green color blindness. I assign this recessive allele that is X linked as X small letter B because it's recessive and found on the X chromosome. The father has a normal copy of the allele, so I assign this as X capital letter big B. We need to draw a full genetic diagram to show the inheritance pattern okay, for red-green color blindness in their children. So how do we do this? So a full genetic diagram, again, you must include everything, including a key. So I show you this key. Uh, so when you are drawing a sex-linked uh, inheritance for the genetic diagram, slightly more complicated. So in your syllabus itself is only the X-linked recessive alleles. Uh, in reality, there can be X-linked dominant conditions or Y-linked uh, conditions, but that one is not your syllabus. If you are interested, you can email me. I will send you some readings to read. But what is in your syllabus for, for, for this uh, sex-linked disorders is only X-linked recessive disorders. Okay, so in this case, red-green color blindness allele is recessive and is found on the X chromosome, so I assign it as X small letter B. The normal allele is dominant for color vision, so and also found only on the X chromosome, so I assign it X capital letter B. Y represents the Y chromosome. There is no gene related to red-green color blindness found on the Y chromosome, so it doesn't mean anything, so I just put it as Y. Okay, so how? First heading, like always, we always put in the parent phenotype. So what was the two parents? They are both not colorblind. So male, normal vision. Female, normal vision. Okay, in this case, I wrote carrier, but actually it's just female. She has normal vision. So uh, genotype-wise, parent genotype for the father who is normal, or displays normal vision, he must have definitely the single uh, normal X-link allele. So X capital letter B, because he's male, he has a Y chromosome. For the female, she displays normal vision, but she's a carrier. So this means that she has X1 normal dominant allele and X1 recessive red-green color blindness allele. But since he is recessive, she will display normal vision. We just call her a carrier. Okay, so now that you have a pair of parents, in order for them to produce offspring, they must first have gametes. Okay, so father makes sperm, sex cell. Okay, mother makes eggs, females, female gametes or female sex cells. So what are the different potential uh, sperm and egg? this pair of parents can produce. So father he can have a X sperm and on the X sperm, it carries the normal allele for color blindness. So normal allele and a Y sperm and the Y sperm has no, no, no uh, color blindness allele on it. For the mother, she makes eggs. Okay, both her sex chromosomes are X sex chromosomes. Because she is a carrier, she'll have one normal allele and one red-green recessive allele okay, in her egg. And so sperms can fertilize eggs in random fertilization. So then we just draw the lines. Sperm 1, egg 1, ruler, pencil. Sperm 2, no, sperm 1, egg 2, using the purple lines. Use your own ruler and pencil. Sperm 2, egg 1, represented by the green lines. Okay, use your ruler and pencil. And fertilization between sperm 2 and egg 2, represented by the blue lines, but you use your own uh, pencil and ruler to draw it. So what are the potential combination of uh, genotypes? So the offspring genotypes, X capital letter B, X capital letter B for the black lines. Okay, for the purple one, Sperm 1, egg 2, X capital letter B, X small letter B. For the green lines, sperm 2, egg 1, you have X capital letter B and Y. 
And then the blue lines, which represent sperm 2, egg 2, you will have X small letter B and Y. So what does this mean actually? So how do you interpret the offspring phenotype? Basically, XX. So X capital letter B, X capital letter B. Based on the two Xs, it's a female. She has both normal alleles, so we describe her as normal. The second cross, again, 2X, so it's female. But in this case, she has one normal and one recessive allele, so she is considered a carrier. But she will display the normal phenotype. Uh, the third one, X and Y, so you have male, but capital letter B, so that's the normal allele, so the male will have normal vision. And then the last potential cross, you have XY, which is male, but in this case, the X has the recessive uh, red green bl color blindness allele so this male will be ha will have red green color blindness so how do you write the offspring phenotypic ratio two ways to do it of course one female is to one male if we are just comparing the sex determination okay the other thing that is actually compared in this genetic diagram is just the red green color blindness in this case although the female is a carrier she displays the normal phenotype so i wrote three normal is to one red green color blindness for the phenotypic uh, display okay so this is how you do it and actually this uh, genetic diagram for the recessive uh, allele for red green color blindness it also applies to the other two case studies that i'm going to cover today okay similarly the second case study duchenne muscular dystrophy ultimately this uh, is a x linked gene so people who have this uh, condition is actually an x-linked recessive allele so in this case because duchenne i uh, i assign it as a small letter d my own arbitrary assignment found on the x chromosome so in males okay in order to be affected male to have this condition all you need to do is to have a single x recessive allele because the Y chromosome doesn't even have that X-linked gene. For females, okay, in order to actually suffer or have the condition of the Duchenne muscular dystrophy, she needs to have both homozygous for this recessive X-linked allele. So X small letter D, X small letter D, then you will have a female with a Duchenne muscular dystrophy. However, if a female has one normal allele and one recessive X-linked allele, for this case, heterozygous in a way, she will be a normal phenotype or you can describe her as a carrier. So a carrier is a person with a normal phenotype but it's heterozygous. A normal female, okay, she can have both alleles that are normal. All right, so the X superscript D Okay, the Duchenne muscular dystrophy allele is actually recessive. It gives you a non-functioning dystrophin protein. The normal allele gives you a functional dystrophin protein. So it's a X capital letter D. It's actually uh, dominant. So I put a capital letter D. Okay, so based on these two alleles, these are all the potential uh, genotypes. So if you are a male with a normal normal phenotype then you will have an x capital letter d if you are male suffering from the duchenne muscular dystrophy then your x you must have the recessive allele female uh, either homozygous dominant heterozygous you will still display the normal phenotype but as long as she is homozygous recessive for the trait then she will display the disorder Okay, so these are some pictures. Dystrophin protein is what it quotes for. And then the last case study, okay, is a hemophilia. Mm, they call this the royal disease, and they, they say suffered by Queen Victoria. And I bracket carrier. Uh, this is a photo of her. Carrier means she has the recessive. A defective allele but because she's a carrier she also has one functioning normal allele okay on her x chromosome 
ultimately when you have the recessive allele okay what happens is you will have uh, excessive bleeding basically your blood clotting does not occur this means a uh, blood coagulation does not occur properly this means that when you have cuts your cuts will keep bleeding and you will not stop bleeding okay so it's quite a dangerous condition and it's because of a x-linked gene okay and it's a due to a recessive allele so queen victoria a painting of her with her husband okay and all her offspring one of her offspring called Leopold, okay, is unfortunate because he inherited the X-linked recessive allele. So he suffered from hemophilia. Okay, so we take a look at this again. Hemophilia is an X-linked recessive allele. Okay, so only females can be carriers. The moment a male has this X-linked recessive allele, small letter H, he will definitely suffer from hemophilia. If he has the normal allele, then he will just be a normal male. There's no such thing as a male carrier. But for the case of females, okay, because she has two X chromosomes, there are a number of possibilities. Because it is X-linked recessive, in order for a female to suffer from hemophilia, both of her alleles must be uh, recessive. If she's just a carrier, for the case of Queen Victoria, okay, so she's normal but carrier, she will have one normal allele and one uh, X-linked recessive allele. And the normal female will have both uh, alleles that are dominant, make her normal. Okay, so this is the very well predicted family tree showing the inheritance pattern of uh, hemophilia okay males are represented by squares females are represented by circles okay uh, and then the colors it means something okay so a normal male is blue in color a normal female is red in color a hemophilic male that means a male with the recessive X-linked allele will be a white color square. And then a carrier female will be half white, half red. Okay. Um, if you are very sharp, why do they always mention Queen Victoria? Okay, so look where my arrow is pointing to. If you look at her parents, her father is a normal male. Her mother is also a normal female. So then, where on earth did she inherit this X-linked recessive allele from, right? Okay, the theory goes by actually for her, she's famous because somehow or another there was a spontaneous, spontaneous mutation. Uh, mutations, like she was the origin okay, of the spontaneous mutation. So for some reason, that is again random, you cannot predict. Queen Victoria over here, she had a random mutation that resulted in her having one X-linked recessive allele, one, okay? So she's a carrier, but she did have the normal allele and one uh, randomly mutated X-linked uh, recessive allele. So that's why it's always when they talk about hemophilia, they talk about her. So she's so-called the original carrier. How it came about was really just a random mutation by chance. Her husband, Albert, was a normal male but because Queen Victoria was a carrier there is a probability that one of her sons may potentially inherit the recessive X-linked allele and did that happen if you look among her offspring okay Alice was just a carrier her daughter okay uh, Beatrice her other daughter was just a carrier however her son Leopold was unfortunate enough to inherit the X-linked uh, recessive allele. So Leopold suffered from hemophilia. And if you go on, okay, so Leopold sufferer, so actually you see his offspring, the daughter he produced was a carrier. Okay, so then uh, Beatrice married this man, I guess, called Henry, and her daughter was a carrier. Alice married louis so again 
potentially she had two daughters that are carriers. Uh, just by maybe again chance, none of the females that were born within this whole family tree actually suffered from hemophilia. The worst case scenario, the females were just carriers. It was the males that are unfortunate enough, the white, white squares, to actually have uh, hemophilia. Okay, because ultimately, by having only a single X chromosomes in males, the moment they inherit that single x link recessive allele, the male will definitely suffer from hemophilia. So it's uh, very unfortunate for the males. That's why they have a higher probability. For the case of females, okay, she will only display hemophilia or suffer from it if both of the alleles are recessive. But in this case, for this particular trait and this family, it was not shown. So it's really a lower probability. Okay, so uh, Queen Victoria had many children, but this one actually just shows you pictures of the offspring that were either carriers, the females are all carriers, or the males, definitely sufferers of hemophilia. So you see Leopold suffered. He didn't live very long, huh? 1853 to 1884. Okay, the females who were just carriers, they did live much longer. Yeah, all right. So princess, carrier, prince. So he lived for three years. Okay, sufferer. So males can never be carriers. They will either be normal or they will suffer from the condition. Okay, so you take a look. They did really... They really didn't live too long, the males. Yeah. Okay. So um, that's all. Okay. So this one's again another uh, pedigree tree or family tree showing the inheritance of hemophilia. Again, just emphasizing this point, males are the squares and you see Leopold suffered from it. Females are carriers. Okay. Uh, in the case for hemophilia, they did not show any females who was who were unfortunate enough to have both uh, recessive alleles. So in this case, they were all carriers. Hope you understand this. Okay, spend some time thinking about it. So ultimately, I would say uh, genes that are found on your your sex chromosomes are called uh, sex link genes. If the gene is found on the X chromosome, you call it an X link gene. And our three case studies all refer to X link genes. Okay, and uh, the conditions are brought about by recessive uh, X linked alleles. So, before I say goodbye, the cat came out to play. Just now, the thunder and lightning scared him a lot. So, he's back out here. He says, Be good, children. I hope you understand. If you don't understand, it's okay. You can send me an email. If not, when I'm back in school, you can also see me for consultation. Uh, at this point of time, you are ready to actually do your assignment. So the assignment, the first question, if I remember clearly, is about an X-linked inheritance genetic diagram. But this one is got to do with your fruit flies. Okay, so I repeat again, uh, your first genetic diagram that you are drawing in your assignment, is an X-linked uh, genetic diagram. So if you need any reference to drawing X-linked genes, you can refer to this particular genetic diagram before you answer the questions on the uh, what uh, eye color and flies. Okay, Ken? All right, have a nice day. See you soon. Okay, goodbye.